I'm not pulling my driveway. We all know what that means. It's time for the drive to work coronavirus edition. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about legendary artifacts. Um, so I'm going to go through and just share stories. Uh, I've made a lot of them and, uh, and others I was involved in, even though I might not have made them. Uh, so we're going to start with the very first ever legendary artifact was in Stronghold. Um, so in the story, um, the angel Selenia attacks Crobax and the rest of the Weatherlight crew. Um, and she has a sword that she's attacking with called the Sword of the Chosen. Um, and we wanted to represent the sword. And at the time, there had never been a legendary, um, anything other than legendary creatures, I think. Um, but we were talking, we are like, well, like, this represents the sword. There's not multiple swords. There's, it's not like there's many swords of the Chosen. Um, and so we said, okay, why don't we just make this legendary? And it was more for flavor, really, than anything else. And the card's not particularly... Uh, the Sword of the Chosen is a two generic mana, uh, legendary artifact, tap, target legend gets plus two, plus two, and it'll end of turn. Um, so it's one of the early cards we made that sort of legend, like a, things that care about legends, uh, legendary creatures. Um, it's also funny, it says target legend, because at the time of the making of this thing, um, the uh, cre- the creatures were not legendary yet. They were legends. It was, legends was a creature type. Um but anyway, uh, that was the very first card. Not not a, a very auspicious start. But the second, the second, so the first, uh, the second ever legendary artifact and the first ever ever legendary artifact creature was Karn, Silver Golem. So this happened in Urza's Saga. So one of our plans was we wanted to sort of slowly dole out the whole um, crew of the Weatherlight Saga, but we just wanted to do one or two per set over the course of the story, which ended up being about four years. Um, we saved Karn for Urza Saga because Urza Saga takes place in the past. And he's the only crew member that was alive in the past. Um, so Karn got created by Urza, for those that don't know that. He was made out of silver because Urza was doing time travel experiments. And silver was the one object that could travel through time, according to his research. Um, but anyway, it was time to make Karn. Um, so the interesting thing about Karn was, um... We had, we had made a Karn Vanguard card. I did a whole podcast on the Vanguard cards, if you want to go hear them. Um, but anyway, on his Vanguard card, we had a card that was basically Titania's song. Uh, it, animated, it animated artifacts. And he was the only one that made any sense with that ability. So we kind of put it on Karn because like, we just liked the ability for the Vanguard card. Um, and it's sort of like, okay, well, he, you know, he's the keeper of the legacy, so he, he has a relationship with artifacts, so, okay, he animates artifacts. Um, so when we got to make his card, like, the popularity of his Vanguard card just made us go, okay, I guess he does that. So, uh, literally his, his, so he has, so, here's what Karn does, I should tell you what Karn does. Karn Silver Golem, five mana, legendary artifact creature, um, when Karn Silver Golem blocks or becomes blocked, it gets p- p- minus four, plus four, and end of turn. Oh, by the way, I'm reading the original card. He's now a golem, but that was not on the original card. Uh, And then one target non-creature artifact is an artifact creature with power and toughness, each equal to its casting cost until end of turn. Uh, That artifact retains its abilities. So I'm reading the original card. Um, Anyway, uh, so the second ability came about because we we ended up matching the Vanguard card. The first ability is we wanted him to be decently sized because he's a giant golem. Like, Karn is like 10 feet tall. Um, Karn is very tall. Um, he's like 10 to 12 feet tall. He's, he's very tall. He's, t- he's taller than Garrick, and Garrick is tall. Um, anyway, I think he's like 10 feet tall, and Garrick's like 8 feet tall, I think, or 7 feet tall. Garrick's pretty tall. Um, anyway, the problem was, at the time, Karn was a pacifist, so one of the flavors of the character was, um, Urza put a memory cap on Karn, so that Karn could only remember so much time, because, um... It was causing problems that he remembered everything. I have to remember why we did that. But anyway, he put a cap on his memory, because uh, Urza does stuff. Um, and Karn had accidentally killed a man, and that was one of his earliest memories, and he had vowed not to harm anyone again. So he was a pacifist. So during the Weatherlight Saga, Karn would not hurt anybody. He, he's still, he's not completely a pacifist, but he, he he's, a, he's a kind golem. Uh, anyway, so he's a 4-4 creature, but 
He's a, he's a, he's a pacifist. Well, how do we convey pa- So he talked about, should he not be able to attack? And like, well, it's kind of lame to a creature that can't attack. So what we decided to do was, um, when he's blocked or blocked, he gets minus four or plus four. So the idea is, he's really hard to kill. So when he gets blocked, he turns from a four four into a zero eight. But the idea is, he refuses to harm anybody. So if he gets in a fight, he won't fight them. He's hard to kill, but he won't fight them. And so the idea was, he's good at blocking and stuff, but he's not good at fighting. But if no one blocks him, okay, well, he'll get through and do four damage. So apparently he's pacifistic toward other creatures, but not toward planeswalkers. Okay, next. Predator for Predator Flagship. Uh, so legendary artifact, two and colon, uh, target creature against flying till end of turn, five and tap, destroy target creature with flying. Um, so the idea was so the Predator is the bad guy ship. Um, so this uh, Predator Flagship shows up in uh, Nemesis. Um, and this is the bad guy ship. Uh, and so we wanted it... That vehicles weren't a thing yet. Vehicles don't show up to Kaladesh. Um, so th- this couldn't be a vehicle. I mean, maybe one day... Maybe one day we'll make a Predator, uh, vehicle, but we have not. Uh, um... So, the idea was it could make things fly because it's a flying ship to help them fly. And then, because it was kind of destructive, we liked the idea that it could destroy things with flying. It, it did, um, damage the, um, the weather light when it, when they met back in... In original Tempest. Um, but anyway, yeah, this was mostly made uh, just to sort of capture that essence. And then uh, the Skyship the sky ship Weatherlight um, ended up in um, Plane Shift, uh, the middle set invasion block. Uh, so uh, Skyship Weatherlight, four mana, legendary artifact. Um, I'm not sure whether I should be reading... I'm, I'm, I'm going to read the original cards because they're more fun to read. Uh, when Skyship Weatherlight comes into play... Uh, now it would be into the battlefield. Uh, search your library for any number of artifact and or creature cards and remove them from the game. Then shuffle your library. Four and tap. Choose a card at random that was removed from the game with Skyship Weatherlight. Play that card in your hand. Um, so the idea here essentially is the Weatherlight is, uh, in the story, was known for going and gathering both people and the legacy artifacts. Uh, so the idea is it goes and gathers thing, and then you have access to them, but it's random. So the idea is you can get any number of things, but you it's random what you get. Like the fewer things I get, the more the more I know I'm going to get them sooner, but the less things I can get. So it encourages you to get more things, but then it sort of makes this little mini deck that is the an exile that you're drawing from that's randomized. Um, but anyway, uh, I thought that's pretty cool. Uh, we did later make a, a skyship weatherlight. Um, we did make one when we went to Dominaria. Um, so I'm going chronologically. When I, when I get there, maybe we'll talk about that. Um, next up is the Legacy Weapon. So the Legacy Weapon shows up in Apocalypse. So um, Urza's master plan, so the Legacy are all these artifacts that he makes. It turns out if you put all these artifacts together, and, and the, the Weatherlight is one of those artifacts, it makes an ultimate weapon, uh, which is used to save the day and defeat the Frexians. Um, so we needed something that was, like, really potent, right? Uh, so we ended up making something that had a Wooburg activation. So if you spend white, blue, black, red, green, you can exile target permanent. Uh, and, and the original cards didn't remove target permanent from the game, because exile wasn't a term yet, but... Um, and we thought that felt like, ooh, you know, it cost seven mana to cast. Um, and then it also said, if legacy weapon we put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal legacy weapon and shuffle it into its owner library instead. So we didn't want you, like, animating from the graveyard. So it had an anti-animation text. Um, but anyway, we thought that was pretty... Uh, there's not been a lot of uh, artif- uh, Wooburg activation, especially on artifacts, so... Okay, next up is the Mirari from Odyssey. Okay, so... Uh, there was this... Uh, I was trying, for those who don't know me, you're listening to my podcast, I assume you do. Uh, I really enjoy doubling things. I like it. And the Mirari was a key part of the story. In fact, it's like the, it, it's an artifact that the entire story revolves around. It's a super powerful artifact that kind of lets people do whatever they want, sort of. Um, and like, how do you capture this? So we just wanted something that was really exciting and powerful. So the original, so the card is five mana, a legendary artifact. Whenever you play an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay three. If you do, put a copy of that spell on the stack. You may choose new targets for the copy. This one, the, the original card mentioned the stack. We don't mention the stack anymore. Um, the, like the Oracle text does mention the stack. We, we find when we mention the stack, it confuses players. We, we try not to mention the stack in card text. Um, it, 
I mean, the stack is there and it works, but usually we, we don't need to reference it. People can understand it. Um, originally, by the way, the Mirari, uh, you didn't pay mana. It just copied every instant sorcery you cast. I think it cost more. It cost like seven or eight. Um, but it was a li- like just, it was hard to get out and it was a little bit too much. Uh, so we decided that, okay, we'd put a mana gate on it. Ended up putting a mana gate of three. Mana gate's what we call, you have to pay some mana when you do something. Um, but anyway, it's, it's still actually a pretty seemingly powerful card. Um, but that is Mari. Okay, next up, our, our second ever legendary artifact creature, Bosch Iron Golem. So Bosch Iron Golem is eight mana, artifact creature, golem legend, trample, six, seven, uh, three and a red, sacrifice an artifact, Bosch Iron Golem deals damage equal to the sacrifice artifact's converted mana cost to target creature or player. Um, so, uh, so Bosch was the sidekick of Glissa, who is the main character of the Mirrodin story. Um, he's a big golem. Um, uh, I think we were just trying to capture him, and we like he was powerful, and we wanted something that sort of was interesting. Uh, it was an artifact set, so we wanted him to work with the artifacts. We liked the idea that... Um, we had previously done fling where you throw creatures to do damage. Like, well, what if he throws artifacts? So like, he flings artifacts was the idea. Um, I think we gave him trample just because he was big enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, just the the character we knew existed in the story, and so we wanted to make him. Next up, Krark's Thumb. So Krark's Thumb is a legendary artifact, cost two. If you would flip a coin, instead flip two coins and ignore one. Okay, so uh, this card was from Mirrodin. Um, we were just trying to make a lot of cool, quirky cards. I made this card. Uh, and the reason I did it was like, okay, well, one of the problems with trying to build a coin flipping deck, there's no reason to build a coin flipping deck, right? Um, so I said, well, what if I gave you a reason to build a coin flipping deck? Um, and so, uh, I like this idea that it, it, it didn't let you determine the coin flip because that was a little too powerful. But the idea is that you can flip two coins and, and then pick which one you want. So instead of 50-50, your chance of winning is now, instead of uh, two out of four, it's now three out of four. You have a 75% chance of winning instead of tw- uh, 50% chance of winning when you flip a coin. Um, the funny thing is this card was originally not legendary. Um, and um, what happened was... They were playtesting it, and it was pro- in, in numbers. It was problematic um, because getting a seven percent chance is okay, but if you start making it, la- you start putting you know four crux thumbs in play, your chance of missing is so low. So the developers came to me and said, uh, "This card is problematic, but not if there's only one of them. Would you mind if we make this legendary?" And I'm like, "Sounds good to me." Um, and so, um. We made a legendary. So we then, in Unstable, uh, I made Crook's Other Thumb, which does the exact same thing, but with uh, dice rolling rather than coin flips. Um, and the, the the thing that's always funny when we say Crook's Thumb is legendary, I'm like, yeah, he does have another thumb. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we took advantage of that, and uh, Crook's Other Thumb is in Unstable. Okay, next up is Mind Slaver. So Mind Slaver costs six uh, generic mana, legendary artifact, four and tap, sacrifice Mind Slaver. You control target player next turn. Um, so it's funny that the the Oracle text is you control target player during that player's next turn. So almost the same uh, text as the original. Okay, so the fun story about uh, Mind Slaver, so this wasn't mirrored in, was I originally made this card to be Volras Helm in uh, Tempest. Um, I had this big thing about, uh, an idea I had of a thing I called marquee cards, and I believed that, uh, inspired by, um, Jester's Cap and Ice Age, I thought, like, every large set should have one card that can go in any deck, so using an artifact, but it could be a land, um, that did something you've never, ever seen before, and just made people go, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Um, and so I made Grinning Totem in Mirage, and Mind Slaver was me trying to do that in, um in Tempest. Uh, the problem was that the rules manager at the time, which I don't even remember who, who the rule manager was during Tempest, um, Tom Wiley's my guess, but it might have been Beth, Beth Morrison, um, or it could have been Paul Barkley. Anyway, one of those early people. Um, I was in, I was told by the rules manager that it could not be done. Um, one of the problems at the time was um, uh, 
there was, I think they were worried about, um, man, uh, mana burn. Um, it's funny because we, in the original version of Mind Flavor, the, the reminder text says, you see all cards that player could see and make all decisions for that player. He or she doesn't lose life because of mana burn. Uh, that was put in, that was rolled into what it means to control the player was, uh, now the mana burn stuff went away because mana burn's no longer a thing. Um, but anyway, for whatever we, I couldn't do it. I, I was told I couldn't do it. So flash forward many years in the future and we're doing Mirrodin and I'm trying to make awesome artifacts. So I, I literally went back and look at old files and I saw this card and I'm like, oh, uh, so it was a different, I don't remember what the rules manager, it was a different rules manager than was, uh, back in Tempest. And I said, can we do this? And they're like, uh, Sure. Uh, and so they let me do it, and we came up with the terminology of what, what it means to control a player. So the, ra- the reason Mind Flavor came about, by the way, for those that are interested, since I'm talking about it, uh, there's a card in Alpha um, called um, Word of Command, where you take control of the opponent and try to cast a spell. But the problem was, you could always respond to it, so like, uh, if I have an in- instant I could cast, I could just cast in response to them making me cast it. And so it, Word of Command never worked really well. So I was trying to solve Word of Command... And it came up with the idea of, well, what if, the way you solve it is, what if you just take over their whole turn? So I use it, and, like, on their next turn, I mean, they could try to do something before we get to their turn, but once it's my turn, and plus they'll draw a card during their turn, so, you know, they can't keep me from playing the card they draw that turn. Um, but anyway, uh, so I did it, um, and then this card ended up getting reprinted in Scars of Mirrodin, went back to Mirrodin. Um, the one mistake of this design, the one mistake, is I do wish the card exiled itself. Uh, when you used it, rather than just sacrifice itself. Because um, a lot of the dangerous things that have a mind flavor is recur- recurring it. Um, and that's not really the fun part of the card, necessarily, so I kind of wish it had excellent. We actually talked about um, doing an upgraded mind flavor in Scars of Mirrodin, like the same thing, but um, it said exile, and like something mind flavor, and we, we talked about it, but we ended up not doing it. We thought it'd be cool to bring it back. Okay, next, Sword of Cauldra, Shield of Cauldra, Helm of Cauldra. So these are three card, three legend artifacts. So Sword of Cauldra costs four generic mana. Equip creature gets plus five plus five. Whenever equipped creature deals damage to a creature, remove that creature from the game. Equip four. Shield of Cauldra uh, costs four legendary equipment, um, legendary artifact equipment. Equipment named Sword of Cauldra, Shield of Cauldra, and Helm of Cauldra are indestructible. And equip creature is indestructible. Uh, equip four. And then Helm of Cauldra costs three generic mana, legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature has first strike, trample, and haste, and one colon. If you control equip equipment named Helm of Cauldra, Sword of Cauldra, and Shield of Cauldra, put a four four colorless avatar legendary creature token named Cauldra into play and attach those equipment to it. So the idea was each one of these is its own equipment, but if you get all three in play, it creates. Um, Cauldra. It, it makes the, the Cauldra token. And so Cauldra is a 4-4. Four, four. So if you put it all together, you get a 9-9 nine, nine creature with First Strike, Trample, and Haste that's indestructible. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Uh, and so the idea was... So the idea of this thing was, I liked the idea of doing something that um, took multiple sets to come out. And note that Shield of Cauldra references uh, Helm of Cauldra, which didn't exist on the next set. That might have been the first time we ever referenced a card that did not yet exist. But obviously hinted that it was coming in the next set, because obviously Sword of Cauldra was in the first set, Shield was in the second set. It didn't take rocket science to figure out where Helm of Cauldra was going to show up. Um, but anyway, we were trying to do something that paid off over time. So this was the first that I think, um, where something was built. I mean, we had cards in the past that you, like, um... Mirage had the Night Stalker cards that got you the Night Stalker. We were this was kind of inspired by that, but spread out over time. Uh, and the idea that was cool was each one was they were they were equipment. So um, equipment was something that got introduced in Mirrodin. So it was a brand new thing, um, and it was just something cool. And anyway, I I liked it quite a bit. Okay, next up is Memnark. So Memnark is uh, artifact creature, wizard legend, n- another. Uh, Let's see, so it's our third, yeah, our third legendary creature, legendary artifact creature, uh, wizard legend. Uh, so one blue, blue. So it's a four five. Uh, one blue, blue. Target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Three in blue. Gain control of target artifact. This effect doesn't end end a turn. Uh, uh, and so Memnark uh, is the bad guy from the Mirrodin story who starts, I think, as a human 
and slowly becomes an artifact creature over time. Um, so one of the things that's interesting is Memnarch, if you read the very beginning of Memnarch, there's this oil that he picks up and rubs between his fingers, and then like the story gets, eh, whatever, this goes on. Uh, that, that oil is um, the Frexian oil, uh, which slowly drives him a little mad uh, and turns him into an artifact creature over time. Um, I think I think I think he gets turned artifact. I don't think he started as artifact creature in the story, but he might have been artifact creature in the story. Uh, I'm now blinking at what exactly we said. Um, anyway, um, he was the bad guy. It is funny, by the way, that um, uh, how few legendary like like obviously um, if you haven't listened to my podcast with Brian Tinsman. Uh, it is the other podcast this week, so go listen to it. Um, but Brian and I were talking in it. We talked about how how many legends there are in uh, Champions Kamigawa, and how that was a really weird thing, uh, and how like Mirrodin had so few artifacts, uh, legendary uh, legendary cards in it. Um, but it did have Sword of Cauldra and Memnarch, uh, and it had um, Glissa and Bosch, and so anyway, or actually Bosch was in no Bosch was Bosch was in the first set. Okay, so now we get to. Um, Champions of Kamigawa. So Champions of Kamigawa, uh, like I said, it had a legendary theme. So this is the first set that had five legendary artifacts in it. Um, before that, the record was... Well, I guess... Okay, so I... I um, Mirrodin had four. So I, I, I guess it's not... Because uh, Crux Thumb, Crux Thumb and Mind Slaver were both legendary editions of Sword of Cauldra and Bosch. I don't know. So there was a bunch of legendary stuff there. So I guess going from four to five is not the most exciting thing. But... Um, None of these have great stories. Uh, it's Conduct Banner, Oathkeeper, Taken's Daisho, Shelva Las Kappa, uh, Tetsuma, Tetsumaza, The Dragon's Fang, and Tenzo Goto's Mall. Uh, Brian shares a story about Shelva Las Kappa in my other podcast this week, so if you want to hear a story about that. Uh, I did, was not on the design team, so I don't have a lot of stories of these designs. Um, uh, I do know that they represent just different parts of the story, but I, I, I don't know the story well enough or the designs well enough to have much story. So we're going to move on to Gleemax! So Gleemax came out in um, Unhinged. So Gleemax costs a million generic mana. You heard me. A million generic mana. Uh, it's a legendary artifact, and it says, you choose all targets for all spells and abilities. And it has reminder text I like a lot, so I'll read the reminder text. It says, help us, R&D under mental domination of alien brain and jar. Only chance, Gleemax blatant disregard for flavor text. Send help. So Gleemax, for those that are unaware of the story... Uh, th- there was a running joke for a long time that R&D, or Wizards as a whole, but I guess R&D, that R&D was, was under, the, uh, under the control of an alien brain in a jar, which is, it was a joke that went back to a Usenet post, like in 93 or 94. Um, but anyway, it was this running joke. We decided, I, I decided that I wanted to make a nod to it. Uh, but I, it was an alien brain jar that had total control, so we... And I knew I wanted to. I knew I wanted to have a, a card that just had a, a crazy high cost because there was ways to generate um, infinite mana in the set. Uh, and so we gave it a particularly high cost. Really, you have to, inter- for all intents and purposes, you have to produce infinite mana. Um, you're not going to probably produce in, 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 in individual million mana, but um, we wanted to give it a crazy cost. I decided a million. I just wanted something that looked cr- like over the top crazy. And like before this set, like the largest ever was like 15 or something. So we jumped from 15. To a million. Um, and then I wanted to capture the sense of Gleemax takes control of people, so you're sort of taking control of your opponent. Um, so anyway, that that is Gleemax. Okay, so now we get to... So there is... I did not I did not have a story about uh, any of the, the legendary artifacts in Champs of Kamigawa, but I do have a story about a very famous one from um, Betrayers of Kamigawa n- n- called... Umazawa's Jite. So two generic mana, legendary artifact equipment. When a crypt creature deals combat damage, put two charge cards on Umazawa, Umazawa's Jite. Jite. Uh, remove a charge card from Umazawa's Jite. Choose one. A crypt creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn, or, until end of turn. Or target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Or you gain two life. Um, okay, so um, I th- the story of this card is. That up until very, very short before printing, uh, I think the minus one, minus one ability was uh, mana production. That I think you can make the creature bigger, you could gain two life, or you could produce mana. 
Uh, and it turned out, based on how the mana rules worked, that we could do that mode. But that wasn't figured out till templating and editing. Like, the very, very last part. So, like, after after everybody is done, but like, it's in editing, trying to finish, um, they figure out in templating that, it, that the rules don't work. So they have to change it. And so at the last minute, it gets changed to minus one, minus one, without any testing, because uh, it's just so late in the process. And it turns out... The target creature gets minus one, minus one. It was quite good. Uh, so this card ended up being very powerful uh, and um, got played a lot because it was so powerful. Okay, uh, next up is Thrumming Stone, which is from Cold Cold Snap. Uh, I don't have a story about that, so I'm going to move on. Acroma's Memorial. So Acroma's Memorial is from um, Future Sight. Uh, costs seven mana, Legendary Artifact, Creatures you control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilant, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black, and Protection from Red. No rest, no mercy, no matter what. Memorial in, uh, inscription. Uh, that, that's the flavor text from Okoroma, by the way. Uh, so the story of this card, the, the quick version, I think I've told the story before, but I'll tell the quick version, is um, we had done a poll online uh, to determine the, the player's favorite uh, legendary creature. I think there was like 64 creatures or 128 creatures. Anyway, Okoroma won that. To honor Akroma, we both we gave Akroma her own theme week on 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 Ma- you know, Magic Online on, on, on Magic um, Daily MTG, and um, and we decided to put her on the bonus sheet, uh, the time shifted sheet from Time Spiral. So then, when we were making um, Planner Chaos, we decided it'd be fun to make an alternate version of her because her, her, the character always was very angry and it made. I mean, she was white because she was an angel, but it, 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 she could have clearly been red. She was she was pretty pretty upset, you know, pr- pretty anger driven. Um, and so we ended up making a red version of her. Um, and then once we did that, we're like, well, we made it. We made it a chroma in future uh, in um, time spiral. We made it made one in planet chaos. Oh, we got to make it a chroma in future step. But what? She's dead. How do we do that? So we came up with the idea of making a memorial. And so it it, it was a way to honor her. Uh, and and it, it was a nice thing that talked about, like, a future part of the story. Like, when she died, but what's left to her? Uh, and then it just grants all the abilities. Uh, all those abilities are things that um, the original Akroma granted. Although, Vigilance had since become a keyword. Uh, original Akroma just said you didn't tap to attack. But since then, uh, Vigilance became a keyword. And Akroma had been, you know, er- eroded to have Vigilance. So, um, or not even eroded. I, I think just she had that terminology. Just it, it was updated. But anyway, that is Akroma's Memorial. Okay, next up, we're we're almost out of time, um, so I'm going to get to my my next card, which is from Shadowmore, Reaper King. Um, so Reaper King costs five two brid mana, one of each color. So two or white, and two or blue, and two or black, and two or red, and two or green. Um, so if, if if as a trivia question, you can ask somebody what card has the most different variants of mana cost. Um, you can pick this one because there's an infinite amount, uh, because any one of those could be swapped for two. And anyway, there's lots of options of what you can do. Uh, anyway, Reaper King is a legendary artifact creature, Scarecrow. Um, other Scarecrow creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever an other Scarecrow comes into play under your control, destroy target permanent. So Reaper King has been a very popular, uh... Um, commander, A, because he lets you play five cards. He's got five card identity. And um, he lets you destroy things. So I know most of when you play with Reaper King, you need to use a lot of changelings because while we've made some Scarecrows, there's not a lot of... We always get asked for more Scarecrows. The Reaper King fans are like, we need more Scarecrows! It's just Scarecrows in this deck, in this in this set. Make more Scarecrows. Um, but anyway, it definitely has been... Uh, this was a very popular card. There's not a lot of Tubrid. Uh, and he's the only card with more... that with. Different color tubers all in the same card. Um, but he, he is much beloved. Um, okay, so we are almost out of time. Uh, but I have time. So next up, Shiram the Hegemon. Uh, Send triplets. Unsight Killer Kings. But I'm going to end today by talking about Mox Opal. So Mox Opal came out in uh, Scars of Mirrodin. So we've made it to Scars of Mirrodin. So we like to put opals not opals, moxes, uh, in artifact sets. Um, and one of the challenges... So a, a mox means it's a zero-cost artifact that taps for mana, um, uh, usually colored mana of some kind. 
Um, but anyway, the, it, it, it's hard to make moxes. Moxes are very tricky to make. Um, and so we were in Scars of Mirrodin. We were back. We had made a mox um, in original Mirrodin. And like, okay, we got, we got to make a mox. Um, so Metalcraft... Oh, so what this card does, it costs zero. Legendary Artifact, Metalcraft, tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. Uh, so the idea we came up with was Metalcraft was a was a um, mechanic in Scars of Mirrodin representing the the Mirren, uh, the, the people from uh, from Mirrodin who were about to get attacked by the Frexians and turned into Frexians. Um, but anyway, so the idea, we liked the idea of Metalcraft. The cool thing about Metalcraft was it could cost zero, but because you needed three artifacts on the battlefield, um, it you don't get to use it right away, so it definitely, it fits the goal of a Mox. Um... And originally, I believe this wasn't legendary, but it turns out getting three Mox Opals on your opening hand, or even two Mox Opals and, you know, a a zero drop uh, thing, was really powerful. Um, And so they said, once again, development came and said, hey, would would it be okay if we made this legendary? Because that solves a lot of our developmental problems. And sure, sure, sure. There's there's only one Mox Opal, so uh, we ended up making this legendary. But that, that is where it came about. So anyway, that was a lot of fun. Um, so I did not make it all the way through. So I, I think uh, I will do another one of these. Um, anyway, this was fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed my jaunt through looking at legendary artifacts uh, and all the stories that it, it generated. Anyway, guys, I'm now at my desk. So we all know what that means. This is the end of my drive to work. So instead of talking magic, it's time for me to be making magic. So I hope you enjoyed uh, today's podcast, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.